Hello, Math 120, and this is Professor Gonzalez, and I'd like to go over some problems from 5.6, which is taking a look at problems of um, word problems or applications, real-world problem type of thing, um, that has to do with uh, equations that are rational um, equations, right? So the setup will end up being rational equations somehow. First problem. So this first problem... Um, basically, you have to understand this idea that if triangles are similar, then their sides are proportional. Their, their corresponding sides are proportional. And with that, you can make a proportion, and a proportion is two equal fractions or two equal ratios. And that, um, because they're two equal ratios or two fractions or two rational expressions that are equal, they're, they're rational expression equations. Uh, but it's probably easier to type, but that's what they are. So these are, we're making a proportion, essentially. So what's happening here is you've got the sun shining way, way far away from us, right? The sun is shining. Uh, sun, when the sun shines, it creates a shadow. We've got this fairly tall building. And I got the sun in a bad spot <laughs> in terms of the angle of it. I guess, I don't know say the sun is shining up here. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to make the sun. I better make it sunny looking, huh? So there's the sun, and it's shining down, and I picked a color that looks like sunny stuff, but you can't see it, so it doesn't matter. So there's the sun is shining down. It's making an, a shadow. It casts a shadow. The sun is so far away that uh, there's a person here, even though the angle is there is a slight different angle, but from the sun's perspective, uh, that's not going to make a difference. So what do I mean by the angle? The angle created by the sun, this angle right here, and of course this is 90 degrees. We're assuming this person's standing upright. So we've got this person here, and there's a shadow that's casted from the person as well. So we have these two shadows casted and they make triangles and by the way these two triangles are similar why because that you know the the shadow casted from the rays of the sun off the building and off the person they're going to be the same and then this is 90 which means the last angle is the same so we've got two triangles that have the same angles but the Sides are not the same, so these are called similar triangles, which means their sides are proportional. This, of course, is my building, my big skyscraper. I don't want to put too much detail into it because I'll go crazy. And there's the big, nice, big arching doorway to get in there. Okay, so now, what does it say? Well, it says a man who is five feet tall. Try that again. Man who is five feet tall does what? Cast a shadow that's four feet long. At the same time, a building casts a shadow that's 48 feet long. How tall is the building? And so our variable x would be right here, the height of the building. So we're going to say, I guess we'll do it in red, let x equal the um, of the Let x equal the height of the building. Okay. So um, what's our what's our proportion that we can make here? Well, there's a couple proportions that would actually work, you know. One proportion is looking at um, x, and you can say something like x is to the height of the building is the height of the building is to the height of the person, right? So the height of the building of the height of the person is proportional to the shadow of the building, 48, over the shadow that the person casts, right? 
And of course, um, you can we can we can multiply both sides by the LCD to clear the fraction. Often with proportions, we just cross multiply, but that would be fine. So it gives us 4x equals, and then 5 times 48. And 5 times 48 is 240. And divide both sides by 4. And x equals 60. Now somebody might be asking, wait a minute, was there another proportion? Yes, there are other proportions that work just as well. Like, for instance, you might have said instead, you might have said, well, I like this proportion better. How about x over, so the height of the building over the height, the height of the building over the length of the shadow is proportional to the height of the person over the length of the person's shadow. And that looks like a different, it is a different proportion, but actually when you cross multiply, you end up getting the same exact equation of 4x equals 5 times 48. So it gives us the same answer either way. So our final answer is how, how tall is the building? Well, the building is, the building is 60, and these are feet. 60 feet tall. All right, cool. There's our first one. Let's go to the next problem. And the next problem talks about, this is called a work rate problem, and they're using um, some numbers just the fact of those numbers, 83 minutes, and then 60, um, 64 minutes, I think makes the explanation of the problem harder to understand uh, intuitively what's going on, or conceptually, I guess. So I would like to make another problem. I'm gonna, we're gonna come back and do number two, but I'm gonna go down here in my little scratch paper, and I'm gonna create Problem 1.5, an extra problem. And that's to explain these work rate problems. So I made my own work rate problem that has nice numbers, just, just because it's nice to have nice numbers to explain. And then we can go with numbers that aren't not as nice, I guess. So here's my problem. We've got Steve. Um, Steve can mow uh, the lawn in four hours. Mike. Mike can mow, and it's the same lawn. In 12 hours. Oof, that's a long, that's a, that's a workout. Maybe Steve has one of those awesome writing mowers and Mike is, has, a, has an old-fashioned uh, push uh, mower or something like that. But anyways, Steve can do it in four hours and Mike can do the same job in 12 hours. We want to know how long will it take to mow the lawn, and that is working together. Working together. So the misconception that people make is they say, well, if Steve could do it in four hours, and Mike could do it in 12 hours. They work together at 4 plus 12, 16 hours. Wait a minute. If they're working together, shouldn't it be less than the slow person? It should be less than 12 hours, right? It shouldn't be more. So adding the hours is not going to work. Okay. Um, so in this problem, notice the word rate right here. If we can turn this information into rates... Rates will actually we're actually able to add the rates together to equal the rate working together, but now we got to figure out what those rates are. Okay, so I'm going to use a nice little visual picture of the lawn.
And then I'm going to copy this. Okay, so let's put one right there. Let's put one right. Come on, work with me. How come I can't move this one? Oh, darn it. Can't move that one. Oh, well. I'm going to try and I can't do it. Drives me crazy. Can't move it. Okay, so this uh, first, this these are lawn. This is going to be lawn. Okay, and this is um, Steve. And we'll go ahead and use a color for Steve. Um, we'll use uh, orange, I guess. So um, we can see it, see it takes Steve four hours to complete the job, right? But the question is, how much of the job can be done in one hour? Well, it takes one hour. Um, uh, it takes four hours to do the job. So one hour gets a fourth of the job done. Two hours gets half of it. Three hours almost gets finished. In four hours, the whole thing's completed, right? So how much, we want to turn this into a rate. And the rate is how much of the job is completed per hour. So in one hour, they get that much of the job completed. So how much of the job is completed in an hour? One fourth is completed in an hour. So um, one thing, you know, making charts could be nice. And, you know, we probably can get away with not making a chart, but I'm just going to do that just to organize our data. We've got, we've got Steve here. We've got Mike. And we also have to figure out what's going on when they're working together. Now this first um, title of the chart is really not super, super useful, but it is just for organization, I guess. And that would be um, time to complete the job. So we said that it takes takes Steve four hours to complete the, to complete the job. But really the more important um, thing to look at is right here, and that would be um, a rate. What portion um, completed? So we want portion completed. Notice I say per, so this is gonna be a rate per hour. Like we say, miles per hour, gallons per hour, um, um, dollars per hour, how much you make it work. So these are rates, right? So portion completed, so the job portion of completed per hour. And we just looked at that lawn, and we can say Steve completes uh, one-fourth. So Steve completes one-fourth of the job per hour, right? And that's the rate that he's mowing the lawn. Now, Mike, on the other hand, we'll do Mike over here in uh, purple. And Mike can complete the total complete job. It said, I believe it said 12 hours. So Mike's model looks much different in the way that... Um, Something like that, right? Because it takes 12 hours. So the first hour, he does that little patch. Second hour, he does that patch. Third, fourth hour, fifth hour, sixth hour, he's halfway done. Seventh hour, eighth hour, ninth hour, tenth hour, eleventh hour, twelfth hour. Man, that's a long, that's a long job. 12 hours, and he finally gets that whole thing done. Okay. So the question is, um, you know, we we can we can see it takes them 12 hours to complete the job. And that's, once again, if you don't, if you don't write this as, as the rate, then it's hard to imagine adding those two together. 4 plus 12 is 16. That's not going to work. But if we look at, at his rate, how much of the job does he get done per hour? How much of the portion gets completed per hour? And he gets that much completed in one hour. 
So he gets one twelfth completed per hour. Now they're asking how much time is it going to take working together, and that's going to be our variable. Let x equal time to whoops, oh boy. Time to complete the job. And that's working together. Working together. So that would be x. So using a similar line of logic that we did with Steve out four hours to complete the job, so a fourth per hour. Mike, 12 hours to complete the job, so one twelfth of the job is completed per hour. And together, x hours to complete the job, so it's one over x is the rate that gets completed per hour. And this rate um, is a beautiful thing because that's something that we can add together, right? We actually can add Steve gets a fourth done per hour and Mike gets a twelfth done per hour. And um, I'm going to move that over a little bit because, because of space when we do these. Um, and, then, and then working together, they get... 1 over x, so it's 1 fourth plus a 12th equals 1 over x. And that's actually the equation that we can solve to solve this problem. This is a rational um, equation. So how do we do this? We want to multiply by the LCD. And the LCD is, right, LCD equals 12x. So we multiply the right, the left side rather, by 12x, 12x. 12x and reduce so 12x divided by 4 leaves us with 3x 12x divided by 12 leaves us with an x and reduce your common x's 1 times 12 is 12 so combine like terms and this problem is getting real nice and easy once it gets set up it really works itself out almost divide by 4 and x equals 3 so this is just my little example to try to I use easy numbers because um, I think I can explain it and get, you can get the logic going here. This means it takes three hours to mow the lawn. And that's working together. And the reason why I picked these numbers, first of all, they're easy to work, but also we can go back and make sense of it. This takes three hours working together. So how does that work? Well, Steve gets this much of the lawn done per hour, right? So there's one hour, there's two hours, there's three hours. So Steve gets that much done in three hours. Now, Mike, on the other hand, he only gets a twelfth done per hour. So if we break this up into twelfths, he gets one twelfth done in one hour, he gets the second twelfth in the second hour, and he gets three twelfths done, which com totally completes the job. And so you can see how this ends up working out. Okay? All right, I just wanted to use that to give an idea or give the big picture on how this works. So we can now move on to um, our second question, which is one of these problems, but they've got some, you know, 30, uh, 80, 83 minutes and 64 minutes. Uh, it's, it, it can't really draw that many little squares and that kind of thing, and it's in minutes. And you change it to hours, and it's not nice uh, round numbers. Um, so anyhow... I just wanted to show you that first. Now let's do this problem. It's going to be the same procedure with uh, just not nice numbers in their minutes. So let's see if we can do this. It says, um, Amiri, I think it is, Amiri, I'm trying to get that name right, Amiri and Horace. Of course, there's a work together piece. And the critical pieces to gather are going to be time to complete the job. 
And the other one is the portion of the job completed. And the real important part is per hour. So that puts that turns this into a rate. Amiri can deliver his newspapers in 83 minutes. Takes Horace 64 minutes to do the same job. Um, the question is, how long would it take them to deliver the newspapers if they work together? We're going to let x equal time to complete. job that is working together. Okay, so using that same logic, and it's hard for me to draw a picture with this one, right? But it takes a mere 83 minutes to complete the job. Um, let's see. Yeah, 83 minutes to complete the job. So how much, uh, you know, and I, I need to get my, my units to match up here. It's, it's portion of the job completed per minute now, right? Because it's per minute, because it's 83 minutes to do the whole job. So we're using the same logic. If it's 83 minutes to complete the whole job, how much does he get done per minute? One out of 83. 63 minutes for Horace to complete the job. How much does he get done in one minute? One out of 64th of the job gets done in a minute. X minutes working together, so that's one out of... Oh, there it goes. One out of X gets done per minute. And this rate is something that we can actually add up. A rate of, of 1 83rd per minute plus a rate of 1 64th per minute equals my rate working together 1 over X. Uh, this is sort of the wacky thing is that, you know, you look for an LCD in 83 and 64, are, they don't even share any factors, so you have to multiply the two to get the LCD times X. So the LCD, like I said, the numbers are a little wacky here. It's 83 times 64 times X to get the LCD. So a big old LCD of 5,312 X gets multiplied by that term. And then 5,312 X gets multiplied by that term. And 5,312 X gets multiplied by that term. And of course, there's going to be some reducing that happens. So this, when you divide uh, 5,312 divided by 83, it just reduces down to 64x. And 5,312x divided by 64 is just going to be 83x. So we have, we end up with 64x plus 83x equals... And of course, the x's are common, will reduce, leaving 5,312. Now, l combine your like terms. And um, with this piece right here, we have what? Uh, 64 plus 83, which gives us 147. So that's 147, and you take 5,312 divided by 147, and that gives us... So just to, I guess, show a little bit more work here. Divide both sides by 147. And it's nothing super nice. It's just approximately 36.136. And this problem says um, round to one decimal place is needed. Okay, so one decimal place is there. So we're going to round to 36.1. So it's going to take approximately, approximately 36.1 minutes to complete the job. That's working together. Okay, let's take a look at a rate. Rate times time equals distance problem, right? So 
Linear motion, this is a canoe travels on a river whose current is running at three miles per hour. So this is down the river, up the river. We gotta remember how that works. It's the speed of the canoe in still water plus the current if you're going down river, speed of the canoe minus the current if you're going against the current. Okay. So um a canoe so the current the canoe travels on the river whose current is running at three miles per hour. So that's different than the last time. They're actually giving us the current speed or the speed of the current. After traveling 32 miles upstream, the canoe returns or the canoe turns around and makes a 32 mile trip back down the stream. The trip up and back takes eight hours. What's the speed of the canoe in still water? This piece right here, what's the speed of the canoe in still water basically means um, if you're paddling that canoe in a swimming pool where the current, there is no current. So we want to know how fast is that canoe going without the current helping or hurting it. So your picture probably looks something like this. They started out talking about going against, against the current because they told us up here that the current was flowing at three three miles per hour um, and we're going against it so let's read this problem it says after traveling 32 miles I guess so I'm trying to keep color going here so 32 miles 32 miles upstream so that's against um, it'd be nice to, to remember that upstream means against The canoe turns around. And does another 32 miles back down. Back down, so 32 miles back down the stream. The trip up and back takes eight hours. What's the speed of the canoe? And usually that question at the very end so the question at the end is going to be, what's the speed of the canoe in still water? That's going to be your variable, and it, that's the case here. So uh, they also gave us a clue that the round trip takes eight hours. Okay, um, let's see. Anything else I'm missing here? This is against. This is with the current. This is against the current. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, very often making a chart is really, really helpful here. So we're going to make the old chart and I'm going to make, I guess I'm going to use um, red for rate. I'll just try to be consistent with that. So remember it's rate times time equals the distance. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make a nice little chart to help us organize those important pieces of information when you're doing a problem like that. And of course, we're going to take a look as when we're going against. So remember, against the current is also considered going upstream. And with the current is going downstream. Um, I, I like to say against and with because against means you're fighting against that three. So you know you have to subtract the three miles per hour. And when you say you're going with the current, you know you're adding three miles per hour. So I think that the wording is a little more obvious that way. So we got against the current and we got with the current. So what is your rate? Well, we better do a let statement, right? Let uh, Let x equal the canoe, All right? Let's see, let x equal the canoe speed. And that's in still water. So here's the trick right here, right? X is the canoe speed. So the rate is x miles per hour, but if you're going against, if you're going against the current, it's going to have to be x minus 3. 
The time, I don't know, but I do know that the distance was 32 miles. Then we turn the canoe around and go back. Um, we go down the river, 32 miles, the same distance. The rate of the canoe in still water is still X, but now we're going down or with the current in this direction, right? And we get to add three because three miles per hour is a current which is helping us increase. So now we've got that filled out. We don't have time, but we did, we were given a clue about time that says the round trip is eight hours. Well, that means that when you take the time against and the time with, the time going against the stream, so that's upstream, and the time with, which is going downstream, add those two times up and you will get eight hours. So the question is, how can we figure out the time? Well, we know that rate times time equals distance. Can you solve for t? Yes, you can. Divide both sides by r, and t actually equals distance divided by rate. Do you have a distance in rate? Yeah, you do. There it is right there. You have a distance in green. So against or going, going upstream or against is going to be distance, 32, distance, right, divided by the rate, which we have the rate, whoops, which we have the rate right here, which was x minus 3. Same thing when we're going with the current, the rate was x plus 3, and the distance was 32. So we have what we need here. We have the time going against, which is 32 over x minus 3, plus the time going with the current, which was 32 over x plus 3. And that equals the total time round trip, which is 8 hours. There we have a rational equation. So now what we need to do is we need to find the LCD. And the LCD is just going to be x minus 3 times x plus 3. So we multiply each term on the left by x plus 3 times x minus 3. And this term by x minus 3 times x plus 3. And this last term by x minus 3 times x plus 3. Okay, we're going to have some reducing to do here. How about x minus 3 and x minus 3 leaving us with this distribution problem. 32x and 32 times 3 gives us 96. Plus the next. So x plus 3 reduces with x plus 3. Distribute 32. This gives us 32x minus 96. Equals. Now in this part right here, I think what I want to do is multiply this. That's x squared minus 9. Now distribute your 8. 8x eight squared and 8 times 9 is going to give us minus, or 8 times a negative 9 is negative 72. Now let's go ahead and simplify or combine like terms. And in this case, we have a positive 96 and a negative 96, which of course zeroes out. 32x plus 32x is 64x. Let's uh, set this equal to 0, and by combining like terms, I'm going to subtract 64x on both sides. And, of course, this is going to give us, come on, this is going to give us a 0 equals 8x squared minus 64x minus 72. Now, I think it's going to be easier if I can possibly factor out something, and I can. How about factor out an 8? which leaves x squared minus 8x minus 9. Question is, what two numbers will multiply to negative 9 and add to negative 8? And once again, I'd like to highlight that this is an easy factoring problem because of that 1. So once I find what I'm looking for, I'm good to go. We've got negative 8 times a positive 1 is negative 9, and negative 8 plus positive 1 is 
sorry, negative 9 times a positive 1 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus positive 1 is negative 8. So those are the combinations. This factors down to x minus 9 times the quantity x plus 1, and that equals 0. So what makes that 0 will be an answer, x equals 9. What makes this factor equal 0, that's x equals negative 1. Now what was x again? We defined x to be, let x equal the canoe speed in still water. How can you have a negative speed? And the answer is you cannot. So we will cross that negative speed out, negative 1, and there's our answer. So we can answer the question by saying the canoe speed in still water is 9 watts miles per hour. Okay, number four. Hey, back to a work. Okay, now, now we've got you know the same type of problem again. Now, this is a work rate problem. Avery can cut the grass in four hours working by himself. Okay, so similar to the example I gave. Maybe a little different in some ways, but hopefully it's starting to feel a little more familiar. And we know that, you know, that chart is not super essential, but I think it's helpful in terms of understanding the problem. So we've got Avery. We've got Michael. We've got working together. So what do we have? Avery can cut the grass in four. So remember, this column is going to be just kind of helping us keep track of things. Time to what? Complete the job. And what's this one? This one's the real important column. This is going to be portion of the job that gets completed. Real important, per hour. In this case, it's hours because you can see that they're giving us hours. Avery can cut the grass in four hours, working by himself. When, when Avery cuts the grass with his younger brother, Michael, it takes him three hours. Ah, there's the difference. They gave us the working together time. Question. How long would it take Michael to cut the grass by himself? Let's let x equal the time it takes Michael to cut the grass. Working, a little bit long, huh? Working alone. Working alone, okay. So x is the time he takes cutting the grass working alone. Let's change this into how much, how much of the job, or what proportion, or what rather, what portion of the job is completed per hour? And by the logic that we used in the last two, the example, the extra example I gave you, plus the last problem we did, or the last type of problem that was typed, this type of a work rate problem, if it takes four hours to complete the job, he gets one fourth of the job done per hour. Working together, if they work together and can complete the job in three hours, it takes one, they get one third of the job done per hour. And x, using the same logic, it's one over x. So Avery's rate, one fourth, plus Michael's rate, one over x, equals their rate working together, which is one third. What you want to do is you want to multiply both sides by the LCD to uh, clear the fraction. So we multiply this by what, 12x is the LCD? 12x, 12x. Let's go ahead and reduce 12x divided by 4 is 3x. 12x divided by x, x is reduced leaving a 12. 12x divided by 3 reduces down to just 4x. Let's subtract, oops. Let's subtract 3x from both sides. I'm going to have to just get that later. Subtract 3x from both sides, and this gives us 12 equals x. 
So we just figured out the answer, x equals 12. And what was x again? x is the time it takes Michael to cut the grass working alone. We just figured out the problem. Uh, let's see. The time it takes Michael to complete the job would be 12 hours, and that's working alone. Let's move on to the... we got two more problems. We've got a bicyclist um, rides his bike 12 miles uphill and then comes back down the hill, his speed coming down the hill. So I'm going to draw a picture here just to kind of get the ideas flowing, get our information. Now he's going up this hill. He's going up this hill and then he's going to come right back down the hill. That's going to make um, that's going to make a lot of information there. So I'm just going to have him going up this hill and then coming down this hill. And this hill, they're going to be the same distances, even though it doesn't look like it there. But I'm going to make them the same distances. So it's, geez, that really does not look the same at all. Try one more time to be symmetric. I'm all stressed now. So there's the hill. Yeah, that's going to be as good as it's going to get. Imagine that being the same. So don't overthink it. That's the same. Okay, so so I'm going to label it too. A bicyclist rides the bicycle 12 miles uphill and then comes back down. So let's just make sure everybody doesn't say my drawing sucks, which they might. 12 miles uphill and 12. So it's the same. Don't tell me it's not the same. Same. 12 miles up the hill, 12 miles back down the hill. His speed coming down the hill is 12 miles per hour faster than going up the hill. The round trip takes one hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, there we go. Now, in hours, that's three and a half hours. Um, not three and a half hours. That's three half hours. So it's three over two hours. Uh, that's also 1.5, right? Hours. But I think um, since we have fractions everywhere else, we're just going to use fractions. But you technically can use 1.5. You couldn't use this because, um, because look at that, 12 miles per hour. So your rate is in hours, so you can't use hour minutes. You have to use only hours. So you have the option of using three half hours or 1.5 hours. But you cannot use one hour and then 30 minutes because the units aren't going to match. Well, we do have a little more information to put down here. It says bicycle is 12, 12 miles up the hill and comes back down. His speed, now I'm going to do my speeds in red. His speed coming down the hill right here is 12 miles per hour faster than going up the hill. So it's going to be most convenient to make his speed going up the hill x miles per hour because then going down the hill can just be x plus 12, right? Because it said he's going 12 miles per hour faster faster than when he's going up the hill. <clears throat> um, the question is, the speed of the bicyclist going up the hill was what? Okay, that works perfect because... Uh, let me get my arrows here just so you make sure everybody knows I'm going up the hill here and I'm going down the hill here. So... Um, X is the speed going up the hill, and that's what we're looking for, so that's really nice. Pencil's not working again. Okay, so let's let's let, let's do a let statement. Let X equal the speed. Ah, sped. I'm trying to squeeze it all in there. That's the speed going up the hill. Okay, so that's the speed going up the hill. Now, remember um, the different pieces that we have on this problem. Um, this is a, a linear uh, motion problem where we've got rate, time, and distance. Okay. They did give us a time, right? Um and let's see, um, my colors on this picture are kind of, I'm kind of blowing it because I said I was going to, bicycle rides, I was going to do distance in green. I was going to do miles per hour in red. 
and then there I go using green again for the time. So let's let's fix that and use a different color for time. It takes hour 30 minutes for time, which is the same as three half hours, which is the same as 1.5 hours. We gotta have it in hours. Personally, I'm gonna use the fraction. Okay, well let's let's go ahead and make our chart. Once again, optional, but very good for, for trying to keep track of things. And we've got uphill. We got downhill. And what do we need to keep track of? We need to keep track of um, the idea that rate times time equals, uh, I used a different color, times time. Yes, it's bugging me, and yes, I've got issues. Time. And I said that I was going to do uh, the distance in green. Okay, so you see, and you remember, I hope, that rate times time equals distance, right? So that's why those are important. Let's figure out what we have. What is our rate going up the hill? And we said the rate going up the hill is right there, x. What's the rate going down the hill? We said x plus 12. What's the time going up and down the hill? We don't know. What's the distance going up the hill? 12, going back down the hill, 12. The only clue we have about time is this. It says the round trip was, was 1.5 or 3 half hours. So round trip means that if I take the time going up the hill plus the time going down the hill, that has to equal my round trip, which I'm using the fraction 3 half. So if you remember that rate time time equals distance, if you solve for time by dividing by rate, we can also say time equals what? Time equals, I'll use color, time equals distance over rate. That means I can write my time as distance, 12, over what's the rate going up the hill, x. How about going downhill? The distance is 12. The rate going down the hill is x plus 12. And that all equals 3 halves. I think we have a rational equation. That rational equation would be 12 over x plus 12 over x plus 12 equals 3 halves. Need to multiply by the LCD to clear the fractions, right? So that LCD is going to be times 2x times x plus 12 times 2x times x plus 12 times 2x times x plus 12. Let's reduce. Maybe pick another color. I'm going to reduce in orange. There's a common x that will reduce, leaving us with uh, 2 times 12, which is 24. And that needs to be distributed. So that's 24x. And 24 times 12 is 288. Yikes, much bigger, 288. Continuing on here. x plus 12 reduces with x plus 12, and 12 times 2x is 24x. And you can see these common 2s are going to reduce. And so now we've got 3x times x, which is 3x squared, and 3x times 12 gives us 36x. Now we have a quadratic that we want to solve. How about if we combine some like terms first, like 24 and 24 is going to make 48x. C 
see if we could do this in one shot. Subtract 48x on both sides. Let's also subtract 288 on both sides. Which then we combine all like terms, we get 3x squared. We get 3x squared minus 12x minus 288. Now, I'd be, I don't like seeing that 288 because that's going to be a lot of factors, but something good does happen. We have a common factor of 3 that we can factor out. We factor out a 3, we're left with minus 96, at least a little better. Also, what's notable is that this is a leading coefficient of 1, which makes my process much easier. I don't have to group. What multiplies to a negative 96 and adds to negative 4? Um, let's see. Negative times a positive is going to make a negative. So that's those your signs going to be something like that. When you add a negative and add a positive, they are working against each other. So basically, the difference has to be 4. So yes, you can start looking at factors at 1 times 96, but there's no way when I subtract those two, I'm going to get a 4. So you might want to just work your way down to some bigger factors. You could try 2, you could try 3. Let me try 4. So 4 goes into 96, it's uh, 24. And the difference to that's 20, that's not going to work. The next possible is 6 times 16. And that's the difference is 10. And the next one's looking really promising, 8 times 12. And the difference of that is 4. So let's make this a negative 12 and a positive 8 multiplies to negative 96. And when you add negative 12 and 8, you get a negative 4. Perfect. And the fact that, that this is an easy factoring problem, we can just slop those answers down over. We've got it factored. So it's going to be factored down to x minus 12 times x plus 8 equals 0. And so what makes this factor equal to 0? x equals 12. What makes this factor equal 0? x equals negative 8. What are we talking about in the real world here? Can they be negative values? What was x? Let x equal, let, here it is right here. Let x equal the speed going up the hill. Well, we cannot have a negative speed, so that is gone. And our speed going up the hill must be 12 miles per hour. Boy, there's a lot of 12s in this problem. The speed of the bicycle going uphill was 12, and it is miles per hour. Okay, next problem. Last problem, yay. Last problem, it says Joe and Nancy decide to take a trip. The first 120 miles of the drive are pretty easy, while the last 100 miles of the drive are filled with curves. There's my best drawing of that situation. I'm going to use green for miles. So the first 120 miles were easy on the easy trip. And um, the curves were 100 miles, which wasn't as easy. You could imagine barf bags and all that stuff. Uh, what else is happening here? While the last 100 miles of the drive are filled with curves, Especially you have a whole bunch of kids that 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 are have touchy stomachs. They drove at an average of eight miles per hour faster for the first 120 miles. Yeah, well it's easier, right? So how are you gonna set that up? Right? They're driving eight miles per hour faster on this easy side over here, right? So the, the most convenient way to do that is let the curvy slow part be x miles per hour and the easy straight part b x plus 8 because it said they drove 8 miles per hour faster on the 120 mile or easy part. The entire trip took 5 hours. Okay, there's our round trip again. Let's put that over here. Round trip took 5 hours. 
Okay, well, we know the important parts here, right? The important pieces is rate times time equals distance. During the easy portion, during the curve, curvy or curves, and we know the important stuff here is in red rate. Then we had time, we'll use purple. Time. Then we had uh, distance, green. So we start filling out the information. The rate on the easy part was x plus 8. The rate on the curvy part was x. We don't know the time other than we do know that if you add the time of the easy part plus the time of the curvy part, it's going to equal, there it is right over there, 5 hours. We also do know the distance. The distance of the easy part, they told us, was 120 miles, and the distance of the curvy part was 100 miles. So like we said before, we can always manipulate our formula. Rate times time equals distance because we, we want to solve for time because that, that's the missing piece, right? Divided by rate, we know that time equals distance, the green stuff, divided by rate, the red stuff. So if I follow that here, I know now my time can be represented by 120 over the rate, which was x plus 8. And for the curvy part, the time can be represented by 100 miles divided by the rate x. Yay, we have a rational equation. That would be 120 over x plus 8 plus 100 over x equals 5. What is the LCD? Well, the LCD is x times x plus 8. x plus 8 reduces, leaving us with 120x. Multiply each term by x times x plus 8. I probably should have done that so I didn't forget anything. x times x plus 8. Let me get rid of something there. Times x times x plus 8. So now um, we are going to reduce. I should have used a different color for reducing. So now we're going to reduce common x's. That leaves us with 100 times x. Distribute 100 times 8. No um, canceling here, right? So it's just going to be 5x distribute. 5x squared. And 5x times 8 is 40x. Now we're going to need to do some uh, combining of like terms here. And I think I definitely see some like terms over here. 120 plus 100 is going to be 220x plus 800 equals 5x squared plus 40x. Let's see if we can solve, get it all equal to 0 in one shot so I don't have to write as much. So I'm going to subtract 220x there. I'm going to subtract 800. So the results of all this subtracting I'm going to make a 0 on the left. On the right, we have 5x squared. Positive 40 minus 220 leaves us with a negative 180x minus 800. Yikes, these numbers are big. But once again, at least they're nice enough to let us factor out an x, which gives us x squared minus 36x uh, minus 160. Still large, but much better. And the big, big bonus is leading coefficient of 1 means this is going to be a much easier type of problem because we don't have to use any grouping at all. What multiplies to negative 160 and will add to negative 36? Once again, a negative times a positive is going to give us a negative. So these two numbers have to have a difference of 36. So they're probably going to show up pretty quick. 
what multiplies to 160, well, 1 times 160 is not going to do it. And even 2 times 80 is not going to do it. Because it has to have a difference of 36. But, you know, we're starting to have 3. Now 4, 4 times 40 is 160. And that's looking very promising. Because a negative 40 times a positive 4 gives us negative 160 and adds to negative 36. So, oof, I'm almost out of space here. And in, not time, but I feel like I'm out of time. x minus 40 times x plus 40. Therefore, what makes that factor equal 0? x equals 40. What makes that factor equal 0? x equals negative 4. What were we talking about? Let x equal... Did we put a let x sign there? Oh, we're in big trouble. We never said it. Let's do this in red. You can see it right here in my chart. Let x equal the rate um, for the curve section of the trip. So, can we have a rate of negative 4? And that's a big no. But we can have a rate of 40. So, they're asking, so, so the curved section is 40. Um, yeah, okay, the curved section is 40. But they're asking, so what's the speed of the first 20 miles, which was the easy section? So you got to be a little bit careful here. We found out. Uh, let me go. Let me go back. Let, let's let's let me highlight what I'm doing here. I'm going back in to fill the answers in here and right here too. So we found out that the curved is 40 miles per hour, and if the straight easy section is eight more, this must be 48 miles per hour. And why am I saying this? Because they're asking for what's the speed of the easy first 120. So it's 48 miles per hour. So you could have done all that correct and accidentally put in 40. Now, if you did that on the test and they gave you zero on that, I would recommend uh, taking a screenshot and sending it to me to, to look at it, give you some partial credit, um, because I would be pretty sure that you... Um, did a lot of good things and just messed up at the very end. And um, a screenshot of your work would even be better because I can see what you did. All right, well, that is it for us. And we are finished with um, word problems. At least there weren't too many of them, but they are definitely challenging. There's the extra one I did for you. I hope that helped out and have a great day.